You've heard of unconditional love, but have you heard of the secret to unconditional happiness and allowing more into your life? More wealth, more success, and more love. More freedom in your life right now. Welcome to the Happy Bar with Israel Savage. I feel I have a very practiced habit of putting others' priorities over mine. So when I met, I think that's, I knew boundaries didn't feel comfortable for me because it feels like a defensive and guarded way to live. And I don't enjoy that. That's not feel good. So I'm, I think I'm just navigating that, hey, it's okay to, to put what feels good for me, my top priority. We have a dog the place that I'm, I'm staying and this isn't good that he did this but he was chasing after our car and so I just increased my focus toward where I was going and focused on driving where I was going and before I knew it the dog just disappeared in the distance I didn't want the dog to follow the car for obvious reasons I didn't want him to get lost or get hit or anything like that so I wanted to put distance between the two of us now the, putting distance between the two of us wouldn't have happened or <laughs> wouldn't have happened as smoothly if I focused on the dog in my rear view mirror as I was driving. I just focused on where I was going and I knew that he would disappear in the distance and forget, forget all about me. <laughs> He's <laughs> off chasing some bone somewhere. I'm thinking, oh my God, you're leaving this dog behind and what if the dog gets run over by another car? But I think that story is like the essence of what I think a lot about and had a conversation with a friend about last night, which is you cannot, I, my top priority needs to be taking care of myself. Remember, a belief is just a thought you keep thinking. Yeah. And there's a reframe that might be helpful. You wouldn't be the first person who thought they were responsible for everyone else's well-being. Right. I agree. <laughs> you wouldn't be the first. And, and I realize that. And you wouldn't be the first person to misunderstand what help is. If you see someone in quicksand and they're sinking, most people would think the right thing to do, they wouldn't say this with their words, but, but they show it with their actions, is to jump into the quicksand with that person and hug it out as you both sink. But joining somebody where they are never helps. You, you can never help a sick person become well by becoming sick yourself. Right. I really understand that, and I'm with you on that, and I don't feel like I would do that in the exam if it were to happen, but I might not be, I don't know, maybe I am not there yet. Well, Because with, every time you say that, it makes such sense, makes, and I feel it so, yes. Because it makes such sense, and, and that's why this is such an exaggerated example. But when you have someone in front of you who you deem is suffering, and who you think can only be helped by you, then that's what we're saying. They're incapable of helping themselves. What we think of as help is actually harmful. And it, it's not harmful beyond repair. Everything is working to, for their good. Everything's working for our good. But I see this very clearly in my own parenting because my nature is to do everything for my kids. It fulfills yeah. something for me to do that. Right down to, hey, can you twist this top off for me? But what I come to learn is that if my daughter gives me a top and I twist it off for her and give it back to her, there's a learned helplessness that's there. And so what I started doing when they were young is crack it open just a little bit and then twist it back on and give it back to them. Right. So they can have the experience and the, the thrill of twisting the top off themselves and know that they are capable of doing it. Here we are, we're in North Carolina at the moment, and my father put him on top, he's 10, put him on top of a riding lawnmower. I actually felt good about that. Whereas before, I, I might have thought, I need to be down there, I need to walk him yeah. through it, I need to be there just in case something happens, just in case something goes wrong. But what I communicate if I'm down there, just in case something goes wrong, is that I feel he's not capable of handling it. Yeah if it does. And I realized in my head, I w actually went through this the other day, you know, even if he gets hurt, it's worth it. 
because any sort of physical harm he may come to pales in comparison to the damage that is done by me not trusting him Mm-hmm. And in turn, him learning not to trust himself. And so if you can start to think about that with your coworkers and friends and how much relief would this bring, I know you're going to figure out exactly what to do. You're so good at analyzing situations and you're so great at just summing up exactly what's going on and navigating your way through. You'll come up with the right answer. I know you will. And then they're going to stay there and be like, ah, but tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. I know whatever you do is going to be the right thing. Do you feel the difference? Yeah. Uh, Oh, oh, but tell me what to do. Tell me. Because if you've practiced, if what you've done there, if the dynamic you've created is one where where you are the soother for everybody, where you are the fixer for everybody, Mm -hmm. jump in and rescue because no one else can do it, then other people have adapted and it'll take a little while to help them feel more empowered and you may not like that feeling either Mm -hmm. because it will be uncomfortable because you'll realize that they don't need you if you liked what you just heard then take inspired action now that's right act while you are feeling good and build on your momentum schedule your free discovery call with me at in studios nyc.com forward slash happy bar. <laughs>